This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The tomb is empty. The stone of fear has been rolled away. This is a day of new life breaking forth in our midst. This is the day when Christ is risen. And on this day, we say, Alleluia. Welcome, welcome to Easter worship with us. To those of you in the sanctuary and those of you joining us on the web, we're glad you're here with us this morning. As the light of Christ enters our sanctuary, I invite you to rise and sing with joy, Jesus Christ is risen today. With our hearts pumping, let us gather our spirits and our minds and our bodies in this space to be in a spirit of prayer. 
most loving God, on this glorious Easter morning, we marvel at your exceeding greatness. The journey has broken us, and yet you have ebbed into all the nooks and crannies, flooded the gaping holes to heal us and wash us clean. Christ has risen once again to breathe new hope, new joy, and new life into each one of us, and we stand in wonder and joyful disbelief. Through Christ's Spirit, we have come to love one another, and we not only witness works of Christ's love in our life, we experience the life and love that cannot be stamped out by violence and death and destruction in this world. Jesus lived among us to love and to heal and to forgive bringing your truth, O God, to each one of us. As joy sweeps through us and in this space this morning, we are strong in spirit, and we are embracing this truth that death and all its cynical, calculating, greedy ways, this death no longer has control over us. Glory, hallelujah. Amen.
join me for a moment on the chancel steps here. Come on down. A few minutes ago, about half an hour ago or so, these kids helped us do something outside. Salome, what did we do? We unburied the flag. The, we unburied the banner. Do you all remember what it says on the banner? The word that we haven't been able to say for, the, for during Lent? What's that word? Alleluia. And there's a banner there that says Alleluia. I wonder what happened to that banner that you all unburied. It's up there. It's up there? Well, I don't, maybe everybody wants to turn around and look, and then we can say the word together. Alleluia! Alleluia! Christ is risen. As the children and I depart for Children's Church, I invite you to rise with the joy of Christ and pass the peace among you. today our scripture reading from the book of Isaiah. For I am about to create a new heaven and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it, or the cry of distress. Nor, no more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Amen. The Gospel lesson from John 20. Ngay tuk nui trung trung lè Lạc trăng trọn rồi còn môi môi Mary Madeleine trỗi môi Tại hôn đã là của môi đồ đi đi Vậy nối trải trầm Simon Philon Và muốn đốt rạc 
lạc nối Đức Chúa Giêsu hiện mà môi năng nối cha đã đổi Chúa nối môi chẳng hay để này trai trừ phi vô hôn phổi môi đó cả bền vui cả tê tên môi cả hôi đầy trai nướng môi đó tê trải mộng cờ phi vô hôn phản đen môi trước nội cứu sông tại vã bồi trống cười tặng nổ vào sao môn phi vô hôn và đinh và trống môi ta vay bổi cờ đầy và cả năng lệm trường tứ ta chư xe sư chẳng ổ cùng môi tôi vôi vài nồng cuốn lạ đề rèn và mũi nồi cát bây giờ muốn tới cả trên mũi trước mũi cần vũ vả tỳ lạ văn tinh vì chúa hẳn nổi chúa hên văn tinh văn văn được chúa chê sư phạt tước là trên toàn ly trong hà môn họ chúa văn mình sòng ma trân trộn bèn nôi trả mạo hơi chúa hỏi phú khóc hỏi và đường còn xuân tải vài tỳ vinh mã cờ đồ trang Mỗi việc nói đáng cưới, mỗi việc nói đáng trăng, rồi sức tu chư cha sư đáng năng. Hành tương sư hỏi, hỏi đáng vĩnh kệ, soi nước khóc, nói cứu răng, vì nói tả để đưa chú ôi đi, toàn việc để nền chú. Vội nói sòng, nói chạy sẽ là đưa chú xe sư đã trôi, nón trăng bệ ta bộ chú cha sư. Đưa chú xa sư hỏi nước răng, hỏi đáng bệ kệ, xa hỏi nước, nói tam trinh, nước quý ráng trở lại kèm là vương biển nối trọng hôi chú vì văn hỏi đã tránh thêm ngày ti xin nôi chú đã bị nổi trở lại nu thì tan xả trở ma lây chú chú xa xưa văn rằng hồi mari hồi mari bon xa lê là tàn ha bô ra ma bô tan và bù ninh nữ là thầy chú chú xa xưa văn đen chóng tu lan tì vì cha chú vẹn cúng cha Nướng phá để đền trong cửa em ta, nối vãng tạ vẹn cương chú cha, tủ tư, cha nôi tư, cha chú trôi. Chú trôi tại nỗi, Marie Madeleine, đệ chú bào, cộn môn chú, vàng minh ban đa lê chú, và này đã phản cương môn nương chê đu. It was early on the first day of the week. It was still dark. Mary Magdalene went to the place where they had buried Jesus. And she got to the tomb, and the stone had been rolled away, and the tomb was empty. She rushed back to where the other disciples were. They've, they've taken the body away. I don't know what's happened. The tomb is empty. Simon Peter and the disciple that was just referred to as the beloved disciple, ran to the tomb, each one of them reaching the spot, looking into the tomb and seeing that it was empty and believing that that was true, even though they didn't fully understand the scriptures that had predicted that this would happen. And they went back to where the other disciples were, but Mary stayed outside of the tomb and She wept. She just wept. And then it says, she looked down. She had to stoop down to look into the tomb. And there, in the tomb, were two angels dressed in white, one sitting at the head of where Jesus was laying and one, one where the, at the feet of where Jesus had been laying. They looked at her and they said, why are you weeping? And she said, they've taken my Lord and I don't know where they put the body. And she stood up and she turned around and there was a man standing next to her. And, and the man, who she didn't recognize, said, Why are you weeping? And she said the same thing she had said to the angels. They've taken the body of my Lord and I don't know where he is. And in that moment, the man just said one word. Mary. Mary. And in that moment when she heard her name, she recognized that it was Jesus. There he was, 
standing right next to her. And it says that Jesus says, don't try to hold on to me. I'm headed to be with my God. But go back and tell the other disciples what you've seen. And so she did. Le premier jour de la semaine, Marie Magdalene se rendit au tombeau dès le matin, comme il faisait encore obscur, et elle vit que la pierre était enlevée du tombeau. Elle courut trouver Simon-Pierre et l'autre disciple que Jésus aimait, et leur dit, « On a enlevé du tombeau le Seigneur, et nous ne savons pas où l'on l'a mis. » Pierre et l'autre disciple sortirent pour aller au tombeau. Ils couraient tous deux ensemble. Mais l'autre disciple courut plus vite que Pierre et arriva le premier au tombeau. Il se baissa, vit les bandelettes qui étaient là, et pourtant il n'entra pas. Simon-Pierre, qui le suivait, arriva. Il entra dans le tombeau, aperçut les bandelettes qui étaient là, et le linge qu'on avait mis sur la tête de Jésus, non pas avec des bandelettes, mais roulé à une place à part. Alors, l'autre disciple, qui était arrivé le premier au tombeau, entra aussi. Il vit et il crut. Car il n'avait pas encore compris l'écriture selon laquelle Jésus devait ressusciter d'entre les morts, et les disciples s'en retournèrent chez eux. Cependant, Marie se tenait dehors près du tombeau et pleurait. Comme elle pleurait, elle se baissa pour regarder dans le tombeau et vit deux anges vêtus de blanc, assis à la place où avait été couché le corps de Jésus, l'un à la tête, l'autre aux pieds. Et ils lui dirent, « Femme, pourquoi pleures-tu » Elle leur répondit, « Parce qu'on a enlevé mon Seigneur, et je ne sais pas où on l'a mis. » En disant cela, elle se retourna et vit Jésus debout, mais elle ne savait pas que c'était Jésus. Jésus lui dit, « Femme, pourquoi pleures-tu Qui cherches-tu » Pensant que c'était le jardinier, elle lui dit, « Seigneur, si c'est moi qui l'ai emporté, dis-moi où tu l'as mis, et je le prendrai. » Jésus lui dit, « Marie !» Et elle se retourna et lui dit en hébreu « Rabouni », c'est-à-dire « Maître ». Jésus lui dit « Ne me touche pas, car je ne suis pas encore monté vers mon Père. Mais va vers mes frères et dis-leur que je monte vers mon Père et vers votre Père, vers mon Dieu et vers votre Dieu. » Marie-Madeleine va annoncer aux disciples qu'elle avait vu le Seigneur et qu'il lui avait dit ces choses. but it is such a heavenly day. Take a look around. As they say in the theater business, we have a full house. Just take a look. Up in the balcony and down here in the front, it is an amazing Easter Sunday morning. And the music. The music. You all were amazing, and I love your outfits. And you are fabulous. And I think we need to just say a word of thanks to Larry Marietta this special morning and to the choir. And finally, because it is Easter, and I know that some people put a lot of effort into their clothing this morning, I think we need to acknowledge some of the Easter bonnets that are with us. Here's one down front. It's gorgeous. And I see two over here, and you just have to stand up, both of you together. Pretty sweet. And finally, the piece de resistance, which is by Sharon Matthews. Sharon, stand so we can see all those Easter eggs on this morning.
Easter really is a time to just celebrate the beauty and the goodness of life, and that is what we are doing this morning. Will you join me in prayer? On this Easter morning, O oh God, startle us. Startle us with the truth. So big, so glorious, so amazing, words cannot contain it. Startle us with love that overcomes it all, even death. Startle us that we may hear your voice in the voices of others, calling us into love, justice, reconciliation, and new, new life. Startle us so that we might live again in your light. Amen. We start with that scripture early on the first day of the week while it was still dark. Easter begins in darkness. Early this morning in the smattering rain and the rolling fog, we early morning risers, there were ten of us, <laughs> huddled in the wet shadows on a hill overlooking our beautiful city and waited for the sun to come up so that we could celebrate this new morning, even in the darkness. So the mood among us was far from hopeless. The moon, you should have seen it, hung in the night sky and birds started to sing just as we were blessed and anointed with oil. This morning, there was a spirit of determination, anticipation, and sheer stubbornness among the first to wake and greet the new dawn. I had a moment this morning of wondering if the first visitors to the tomb so long ago didn't possess some of that raw nerve and sub stubborn spirit, for surely they were compelled to come, but they didn't have the faintest idea what they would find, discover at the tomb once they arrived. Living as we do in community, we never know what we will find. Earlier this week, an older couple received a phone call from their son who lives far away. The son said he was sorry, but they wouldn't be able to make it to Easter this year. Something about the kids being busy with school and the long trip just wasn't worthwhile for all of them this year. As the couple put down the phone, they walked into separate rooms, not talking with each other both caught up in their own loneliness and disappointment. Early this week, a new husband died from a long battle with cancer, leaving behind a, wo a widow who was grateful, so grateful for their love match, but sorrow-filled as she begins new life without him. Early this week, I received a text message from someone who has been trying in a variety of ways over the past five years to bring a baby into the world. She received the word on Wednesday that her eggs could not be fertilized again. Early this week, it was still dark. Easter doesn't come until we have spent some time in darkness. That is why, no matter the blustery clouds, the cold rain, and the soggy donuts, folks gathered and waited, waited for the sun to come up, to rise early this morning. The darkness before dawn in all of our lives is real life, and we cannot see beyond it or through it to the light but lurking, I believe, somewhere deep inside, hope stirs in the human heart, and we become willing, very willing, to outweigh the darkness for the promise and the hope that Easter brings. As Mary made her way on that first morning through the darkness to the tomb, her mind must have been flooded with memories of happier days in Galilee, before Jesus got into that big mess in Jerusalem. She had such high hopes for him, and because she believed in him, high hopes for herself and for the other followers. 
Now he's been crucified as a traitor to Rome and been called a blasphemer to boot. His friends have all fled, and nothing, nothing remains of the life they had together before that terrible Friday. It was not yet light. It was dark when she arrived at the mouth of the tomb, and she was startled to discover as she looked inside that it was empty. Horrified, she ran to tell her friends and to tell them that they had taken her Lord and no one knows where they have laid him. John reports in his gospel that there was a lot of running back and forth to and fro from the tomb on that first morning. No one, it seems, was capable of simply staying put and waiting or figuring out among them, talking together about what was really happening. Confusion reigned, and when it does, people run around a lot. You should have been here before this worship service started. (laughs) But suddenly, things get even stranger. After confusion and a good cry by the door of the tomb, Mary looks deep inside, and she sees there a couple of men sitting. Oddly, Because this is strange, she is not impressed. But she tells them they have taken the Lord. And right behind her, the the cemetery gardener shows up simply out of nowhere. The gospel depicts the next moment in simple, stark language. The scene between the gardener and the weeping woman is unmistakably ordinary but deeply personal. According to John, Mary looks the gardener in the eye, listens to his voice, but doesn't recognize him. Now, if this were a successful PBS masterpiece classic, the gardener, who incidentally is the risen savior, would have a deeply sonorous voice and a tender soulful gaze But this morning, this morning, we hear the voice as a demand for recognition. Mary, stunned into reality, Mary can only say the name that is familiar to her, Rabboni, teacher. Then filled with the joy of recognition and a desire for reunion, she lunges for him. But he says to her, Do not cling to me. Do not hold me. Now, this is not my favorite part of the Easter story. If I were handling this scene, I would call for a long, tearful hug and some poignant eye-gazing, followed by the two of them walking arm in arm down the garden path back to the rest of the disciples for more tearful hugging and eye-gazing. Much has been made out of Mary Magdalene's love for Jesus and a romantic conclusion to the story, which would fit all our desires on Easter for a happy ending. But what we get, what we get in this story is just one look. One look between them. And that look changes everything. That one look between Mary and Jesus, tells us so much about how we come to know and look for God in our lives. With with it, Mary transcends ordinary desire, ordinary human desire, and enters into the realm of the holy. She experiences fully, maybe for the first time in her life, her longing to know and be known to be held in God's embrace, to be seen and recognized for who she is. Hers is the most fundamental longing of the human spirit. We all want to be known by God, held by God in the most difficult and the most wonderful moments of our lives. We don't want a cosmic force, distant, impersonal, and calculating. What we long for, what we long for, 
is to be seen and touched, recognized and unconditionally loved, accepted for all that we are and sometimes are not. As Jesus came to Mary, the God we glimpse at Easter comes to us in very personal ways, emerging from the darkness of our confusion to speak our names out loud, clearing up our vision often so blurred with grief, calming our fears and inviting us to move beyond our disappointments in life into something new. Jesus comes to us on this day, not as a ghostly figure or an abstract idea or the answer in a romance novel. Jesus comes to us as presence that reaches beyond our clever arguments into the very core of our desire for life, for life to be real, just, loving, and whole. Today, then, we realize once again that we cannot go back in our lives to the way things used to be, what we long for, what we miss, what we want to hold on to at all costs, is dead. This story tells us that things will not return to the way it has been and always shall be. Easter reminds us that the only way out of darkness and confusion is to move ahead into life. And the one who leads us is the risen Lord. At the resurrection, we discover a new vision of God, one who arises out of our brokenness, our losses, our disappointments, to lead us ever forward into new life. Now, it has always been hard for people to believe in the resurrection. We make our own attempts to grasp it, but we tend to reduce it to, an, to reduce such an awesome truth to sentimental claims about the fecundity of life or the recreation of the earth at springtime because we cannot grasp the beauty and the power and the wonder of this day. Just take a look at the symbols of Easter that we have come up with. Chocolate bunnies, brightly colored eggs, white Easter lilies all around. I believe that the question raised at Easter is far more important than all of this. The question is, where in your life have you encountered the risen Christ? This past week, United Church of Christ pastor Matthew Kreben a son of this congregation and one of the first responders after the terrible shootings at Newtown was interviewed by the Daily Beast. He spoke about the dark days after the world-shattering one when the terrible shooting took place. He said that in some ways it is more difficult now than in the first days after the shooting. People realize, people know, in that town that things will never go back to normal. Life will never be the same again. The rawness of grief, trauma, and loss is what is being felt now. And Matthew compared it to a body suffering after a traumatic injury. But Matt was also able to identify a palpable sense of compassion, love, and hope that is sustaining that community. He went on to say that the community could not and would not allow one tragic and unimaginable day to lead them down a hopeless path of fear and despair. What is ahead now is day-by-day -day choices that will lead to hope, healing, new life, and transformation. For Matt, as a Christian, has encountered a risen Christ in the midst of a terrible tragedy that none of us ever want to face, let alone live through. 
just one look. Mary was never the same after Easter. Neither is anyone who has encountered the terrible darkness and found a way to grab hold of the hand of God and to walk into the light. What matters is not that we are confident of our hold, but that we are confident that God has a hold of us. Knowing this, we stumble forward, oftentimes broken, but open. We do not come to church on this Easter morning simply to sing the beautiful songs and eat amazing cookies and generally feel good with each other to be alive. We come so that we can remind our bodies and our souls and the deepest recesses of our lives that we will move from darkness into light, that real love overwhelms all our fears, and that God's stark grace is enough. Mary heard her name and saw the risen Christ and felt the power of God to make all things new again in her life. After the resurrection, there is no normal. May we this morning enter into this resurrection community, hoping to be met, ready to hear our name called, and open to receiving that look of recognition and love. And may we receive a gentle nudge to move out into all the world where wonder begins again and again and again. Just one look, that's all it takes. Dear friends, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed and goes before us into all the world. Alleluia. Amen. we have so much to celebrate. New life, new hope, a belief in the resurrected Christ who gives us so much. And so today, as we are gathered in community, I invite you to lift up those joys in your life, those places where the stone has been rolled away and where you are living fully into the present. Where are those joys for you? Today, Easter, what are your Easter joys? Jean's daughter got engaged. Wonderful joy. Francis's wonderful four daughters, one of whom is with her today. Your Sam's wonderful one son. (laughs) 
Elsa and Liam. A visiting son and daughter. Grandchildren. Grandchildren. <laughs> Parents. Larry and his music ministry. Go ahead. Wonderful. A cataract operation can help a friend that was going blind. Marie's grandchildren, Julia and Seth. First-time great-grandparents. First-time great-grandparents. <laughs> Songs of the soul. Harmonizing in church with her mom. Harmonizing in church with her mom. <laughs> Beautiful. This gathered community. Barbara's having her son's home. The beautiful banners. Easter morn. Thank you, Phil. Having, having a labyrinth to walk. Life. Life. Trumpet. A 99th birthday. <laughs> This remarkable universe. <laughs> Pat's glorious Easter sermon. The fact that it's done. <laughs> <laughs> For all of us. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I'm sorry? The brass quintet. The brass quintet. And the freshness of the new rain. Mm. Yes. The lots of work that's being done to mobilize around climate change. Mm. Yes. A new love later in life. <laughs> The morning light in the sanctuary. Well, as the many sounds of our gathered community reverberate around, let us lift our hearts and be in this moment of prayer together. Oh God, there is such joy in this place for life at its very beginning and life that has been filled with wisdom and exploration and experience. You hold all of this for us. Help us to break forward as we go from this place and we journey into what is new, no matter where we are on our journey, what is broken and what is open and where you come and you hold us so that we may be the risen Christ in the world today. Here are these joys that we have shared. They are rich and full and bountiful and we are grateful. Hear now our prayer that we share in a unified voice that is across the world with all the people of the world celebrating the risen Christ today. These words that Jesus has spoken for us. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the realm, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We now have an opportunity to continue the hope and the renewal of this season, our Easter offering will help to support the local work of four organizations, each of which offers hope and resources for positive changes in our community. Destiny Art Center, Solar Richmond, 
planting justice, and rebuilding together. Destiny Art Center is an Oakland-based violence prevention, youth development, and arts education center serving youth throughout the Bay Area. Our offering will enable Destiny Arts to magnify its social impact by training and engaging more school-based educators with its innovative curriculum. Solar Richmond provides unemployed and underemployed youth with solar installation training and transitional employment. Our offering will support the integration of mind-body awareness into the curriculum to help trainees overcome past trauma and develop emotional literacy to enhance their work effectiveness. Planting Justice is an Oakland-based organization committed to environmental justice. Our offering will support the training and subsidize the wages of parolees from San Quentin who work with the organization's Transform Your Yard team in building edible gardens for low-income clients. Rebuilding Together has mobilized 20,000 volunteers to rehabilitate more than 700 homes in the Bay Area over the past 20 years. Our offering will cover the costs of materials and equipment needed to rehabilitate a local home next month, complementing the volunteer labor of FCCB volunteers. As I invite you to give generously to support the work of these organizations in our community, I invite the ushers to please come forward to receive our offering. And I also invite those of you participating via the web to consider giving a gift online. Please designate your gift for the Easter offering. Thank you.
me, please. Dear and ever-present God, may you receive these gifts, not just these offerings of money, but the breath and the bone and the beatings of our hearts in this moment of powerful community where we come together as one people and in the promise and possibility of taking hope and love out into the world. May we be a resurrection people, bringing hope where there is despair and peace where there is violence and love where there is emptiness. Be with us in this work that we take on on your behalf. Let it be so. Amen. shall go out in joy and with peace. The mountains and hills before you shall burst forth into singing, and all the trees of the fields shall clap their hands. Out of the thorn shall come up a cypress, and out of the briar a myrtle, and this shall be a sign unto you, a sign of peace, a memorial unto our God that shall never, never be cut off. Amen. We invite anyone who wants to come up to the chancel to sing the Alleluia Chorus together. You can sing it in your seats or you can come up front. But you can see we have the sopranos here, the altos here, the tenors there, and the basses over on that side. So come on up if you'd like to sing. <coughs> 